in this video, we'll discuss trajectories as another way to try to analyze nonlinear first order systems. So trajectories, or sort of the path a solution follows, is another important way we can analyze what these solutions look like over time. The main idea here is we're going to sort of ignore the time component and just look at what are the possible points or sort of states the solution could be in over as things develop, just in terms of the x and y values. I don't really care how long it takes to get to certain points. I want to know, like, if I start at a certain point, can I say I just will definitely be on this sort of trajectory as time goes on, no matter how it actually gets there in time. And the idea here is similar to what we did with exact equations way back in first order equations. Right? If I want to look at dy dt, and what I really want to do here is view y as a function of x is my goal. Because that's going to be a trajectory. It's going to be y as a function of x instead of ignoring t. Now, if I view y as a function of x, and I can write dy t with the chain rule as dy dx times dx dt, which means I can then rewrite dy dx as the ratio dy dt over dx dt. Now, the point here is if I'm solving a two component system, both of these are given to me in the algorithm that I'm trying to solve. So what I can do is divide them to get dy dx and try to solve now the first order equation dy dx equals whatever this happens to be, right? I'll end up with something like dy dx equals g of x y divided by f of x y. And that's now a first order equation. It's probably highly nonlinear. It's probably hard to solve. But if I can solve it, that will give me the trajectories for the solution, which is great if that all works out. There's another way we can analyze this for a particularly nice system that's going to be more helpful for how to solve these out. And this ties back to our exact equation that we've discussed before. What was the idea of an exact equation? Well, it was the idea that I had some function, psi of x, y, that was going to be equal to a constant. If I differentiate this in x, I would get something like psi x of x, y, plus psi y of x, y, times dy dx, equals zero. And for an equation of this form, I could reconvert it back into this form up here to then get the trajectories of my solution based on that setup. Well, I think about the same thing here now for systems. So what is the idea? Well, the idea is that if I have a function h of x, y that I want to be constant, I can differentiate this expression now in t instead of in x. Differentiate this in t, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get that h sub x times dx dt plus h sub y times dy dt equaling zero. And how can I get this to work in a nice convenient way? Well, this works out nicely if, it's not the only way, but it'll work in this case, if I have that dx dt is negative hy and dy dt is positive hx. And this is sort of a convenient setup here. If I knew this happened, I could then basically play the exact same role as with exact equations before. Right? If I know that dx dt is partial in y with a negative sign, dy dt is partial in x, then I know the trajectories here are exactly where h is a constant. And I can then integrate like I did for exact equations to find this h and solve the trajectories from there. So this idea here leads to the idea of a Hamiltonian system. So what this means is that we say a system is Hamiltonian if there is a function h of x, y, so that dx dt is negative h, y, the same as we had before. And what do we get from this? Well, we get that the trajectories then are h of x, y is a constant. And you can think of this part in that this h in some sense represents the energy of this system. Right? There's, you can write these for like motions and stuff, as long as you don't have any damping, this is Hamiltonian, and energy is conserved. So this here tells me energy is conserved because if I take the derivative of this in time, I get zero because energy doesn't change in time. And then lastly, we can find h by integrating like for exact equations. But what if we don't have h? How do we know it's Hamiltonian? We get a similar check to before. Right? If this is my function f, this is my function g, for exact equations, I needed the derivative of the first one in y equal the second one in x. But here, there's this minus sign. The check for Hamiltonian is that fx plus gy equals 0. Differentiate this in x, I get h sub xy. Differentiate this in y, I get h sub xy. This minus sign means I want to add them together. 
to get to zero. So you can check this fact, see if it's Hamiltonian. If it is, then do the integration stuff from exact equations to figure out what this h is and go from there. Now for example of this, I want to determine that the system is Hamiltonian and find its trajectories. So what do we have here? Well, if I look at f x plus g y, that's my check for Hamiltonian, I get 1 minus 1 is 0. Great, so it's Hamiltonian. Now if I wanted to find trajectories, I could either solve dy dx is dy dt over dx dt, which is negative 8x minus y over 2y plus x. Try to solve this out, set up what's going on here, which I can try to do and see what happens. So if I multiply both sides by the 2y plus x, I get 2y plus x times dy dx equals negative 8x minus y. Add that over, 8x plus y plus 2y plus x dy dx equals zero. This looks a lot like an exact equation. This is why these all related and why a lot of the ideas seem the same. It comes down to the same ideas here. Right, this is exact because I differentiate the first one in y, I get one, second one in x, I get one. I can integrate and try to solve. If I integrate the first one in x, I get a 8x plus y dx, I get 4x squared plus xy, function a of y. Differentiate in y, I get x plus a prime of y, should equal x plus 2y, which means a of y is y squared. So what I get for my trajectories are that psi of x, y equals 4x squared plus xy plus y squared. And this equaling c will be my trajectories here. You can do the same thing as a Hamiltonian system. And it turns out if you do that, you actually end up solving this exact same setup. Again, this is your negative h sub x. So you integrate that in x and then do the same thing in y. It's the exact same process you would use before to find it, but just this way as well. Now, how does this relate to the fact that we have a linear equation here? So these are ellipses. How does this relate to the fact that we have a linear system here? Well, if I go back up, I see that the system here has a matrix, one, two, minus eight, minus one, and I can solve for these eigenvalues. And I get purely complex, purely imaginary eigenvalues, so I get a center at this point. Which makes sense, this is a circle around, they don't come in or go away, which makes sense based on having ellipses for my trajectories. So that's the idea of a Hamiltonian system, and how you can ask the trajectories of a nonlinear system to be able to solve for these trajectories and what they are, understand how the solution behaves, whether it's linear or whether it was nonlinear, you can use the same process to try to solve for these trajectories and see how it's going to happen as time goes on.